VIU Online presents GEC 101 English Composition, Week 1 Theoretical Lecture, Expectations for College Writing and Critical Thinking and Argument. This lecture is presented by Dr. Laura Hills, Professor of English at Virginia International University. You are taking this course because your college instructors and your future colleagues and supervisors will expect you to demonstrate many abilities. These include the ability to think critically, to consider ethical issues, to find and solve problems, to conduct effective research, to work productively with other people of widely different backgrounds, and to present the knowledge you construct in a variety of ways and in a variety of genres and media. So, is this course, GEC 101, a course about writing? Or is it about thinking? Well, I can tell you that as a professional writer who has been publishing work for a little more than 30 years, that I don't think writing and thinking are two separate things. I think writing is a form of thinking. You can't write without being a critical thinker. I believe that in my many years of writing that the practice of writing regularly has made me a better thinker. What you're doing is you have to think about every word that you choose and in so doing construct arguments, describe things for your readers, and teach them. For my money, I would say there is no better way to become a better thinker than by writing regularly. You will need to move beyond the skills you've developed as an informal writer, such as the skills you might develop using social media, and sharpen your skills as an academic writer. I'm very active on social media. I write for Twitter, I write for Facebook, I blog, and I'm on Google+, Plus. and the kinds of writing that I do in these media is decidedly different than the kinds of writing that I do for more formal audiences. In this course, the focus will be on formal writing, but I do think that if you're actively writing every day using social media, it makes you more fluid and more comfortable with language. The trick is not to take the habits you develop in social media and have them somehow end up in your academic papers. You've got to be able to analyze and interpret the work of others and eventually you've got to be able to create new knowledge based upon your own thinking and what others have said. So when academic writing you may be asked to write a report. However, when you get your wings as an academic writer, so to speak. When you become a more advanced writer, you go way beyond report writing. You have to synthesize knowledge and sometimes you have to find original research through your own work. So you're asked to move beyond just simply reporting what somebody else has said. But you've got to do a heavier amount of brain work to make this happen. And that's what this course is going to focus on in part getting you to go beyond report writing and into other kinds of writing that will be required of you in an academic course. We are considering this week many ways to make our writing more direct. We are urged to get to the main point quickly, to provide definitions, to state our main point early, to avoid digressions, and to, in other ways, make our writing easy to consume for academic audiences. Well, if you like to cook in the kitchen, you know that making a dish as tasty as this spaghetti and meatballs requires some work. You don't serve people raw pasta and raw meat. It requires the right preparation, the right amount of cooking and attention to detail, and not burning what you're preparing. Well, in writing, it's the same thing. You're being asked to take raw material and to cook it, so to speak, so that it becomes a tasty and easy to consume dish for your reader. We are also urged 
to become engaged readers. Your instructors will expect you to be able to interact with the text. Now, we know that you have been reading for a very long time and that you've read many other courses prior to this one. What you're asked to do, though, in this course is to read maybe a little differently than you have before, more actively, more critically. And when we say interact with the text, it's when you're reading and you're asking questions as you go along, finding points where you agree and where you disagree, looking for opportunities to make suggestions. So it is not a passive skill in reading, but rather one that is extremely active. Readers depend upon writers to organize and present their material. This calls to mind an expression that can guide you in your writing. If the writer doesn't suffer, the reader will. As writers, we must have our readers in mind as we choose every word, phrase, and sentence. Or else, you end up with a fellow who looks like this, who is in pain because of what you have written. I will tell you that sometimes writing is wonderful and I, I fly through it and sometimes I'd rather be out there with a shovel digging a ditch. It is hard work sometimes to work through and yet if we don't quote suffer then this is the result that we inflict upon our reader. We do the hard work, the heavy lifting, so the reader does not have to be pained by what we write. The writer must consider the rhetorical situation. That includes the writer, audience, context, time and space limitations, medium and genre, tone and style, and level of language. I like to think of this as the landscape in which we are writing. And everything works harmoniously, as you can see in this beautiful picture. When we know who the players are, what we're to do, then the whole picture is filled in and we're able to contribute to that landscape. In academic writing, you've also got to understand the assignment you've been given by your instructor. Now, I will tell you the most common question I've been asked by students is, how long is this supposed to be, this piece of writing? And my answer is always the same. It's as long as a piece of string. You have to understand how long that piece of string is supposed to be in the case of your assignment, but also what kind of string. In other words, you have to know inside and out what the expectation from your professor is for your writing. And when you get into the workplace, it is no different. You're writing for a purpose and you have to know what the expectations are. If you have the littlest doubt about what is expected of you, that's job one. Clear that up before you begin the process of planning and writing your paper. Choosing a topic when your instructor asks you to do that is a crucial step in academic writing. It's recommended that you choose a topic that truly interests you and that you know your rhetorical stance, that is your stand on the topic. And you've got to know your purpose as a writer. Now in this course you will be writing a research paper where you choose your own topic. Finding the right topic is just like this key, one key among many, but it is the one that opens the door to your paper. So if you don't do anything else as a result of listening to this video. Remember this important point. Spend time coming up with your topic. It's worth it rather than rushing to the writing. If the topic's right, the key fits in the lock and the door opens. But if you've got the wrong topic, you've got the wrong key, and you're going to have a terrible time opening the door to your paper. This is the most important point of today's lecture. When we write, we must keep a specific audience in mind. Your instructor and classmates will be your audience for this course, but you must also consider the broader audience who you may be trying to reach through your writing. And I like to imagine this kind of a group. I may be writing for a very small audience in some cases, but I'm speaking to a larger you than just one or two readers. Think about who you're speaking to. When you're writing in an academic context, you're really writing 
for a large academic body of people. Think about the world and pretend when you are writing that all of them are going to be reading your paper. All the people who would have interest in your topic. We must also consider the genre in which we're writing. You may be asked to write using different media and in fact in many academic courses you're going to be asked to prepare websites, do blog posts, and other kinds of writing beyond just a traditional paper. Back in the 1970s when I was an undergraduate student I took English 101 at my university and at that time of course there was no World Wide Web and so that was not a component of English composition. All we wrote was traditional papers. But you will see in this course today, as you're taking it, that this course includes components about writing for electronic media, because that is the way of the world. So we will be doing some work in that area, as well as traditional academic writing. Most of your academic writing will be done in standard academic English. A great deal of it will be done in formal style. And in this course, that is the expectation for most of your assignments. For any paper, such as a research paper, that's the tone you must take. Before writing, you are encouraged to explore your topic. You can brainstorm, free write, cluster and mind map, draw or make word pictures, keep a journal, consult numerous sources, collaborate or ask questions to immerse yourself in your topic. Don't rush this step. In this course, you're going to have a chance to create a clustering map as one of many tools you can include in a bag of tricks to help you brainstorm ideas for your writing. The key then is to narrow your topic and your goal is to draft a working thesis. And in some ways, you have to be a part detective when you're immersed in research to figure out where is the thesis in all that you are working on. That's your job, is to find it and then make that the centerpiece of your writing. There are many ways to organize your information, <clears throat> spatially, chronologically, or logically, for example. Information organized logically can illustrate, define, classify, compare and contrast, show cause and effect, present a problem and solution, narrate, or create an analogy. Are you getting the sense that there are a lot of choices to make? The time to make the choice is before you begin writing your paper. That's why we're going to explore in our readings and our discussions all of those options that are available to you so that you know that you're making a good choice for the kind of audience, purpose, and context of your paper. A storyboard can help you come up with an organizational plan. Storyboards can be created with cards or sticky notes. In fact, I happen to know a professional playwright who uses this system to create her stories for her plays. And this is just one of the other tools for a bag of tricks that you'll be reading about in our assignment this week. All of this will enable you to create a first draft. Of course, the writing process doesn't end there you'll need to reread and revise your draft. In fact, you will be revising in this course as part of the course design. You will write, you will receive feedback, and you will revise your writing. That's how you get to be a better writer. It isn't enough simply to write, but we learn when we get feedback and then re-examine our writing through a critical lens. Peer reviewers can help you tremendously. In this course, you will be a peer reviewer and you will receive feedback on your writing from your peers. The focus on this point is not on grammar and spelling, but rather on the ideas being presented and the organization of the writing. So when you are a peer reviewer, don't focus on a misspelled word here or there, but rather think about the larger picture. You will, be, you will revise your writing in this course based upon feedback from your peers and instructor. Consider the broad revisions first, organization, title, introductions, and conclusions. Later, you can revise your paragraphs, sentences, words, and tone, and finally get down to such things as grammar and spelling. So, the concept here is 
think big, the large organizational picture of your writing. And don't focus on the minutia of a spelling error right off the bat. That can be corrected in final polishing and revision. Proofreading the final draft is essential. You will also become a better writer if you take time to reflect on your own writing and learning before moving on to other projects. And this is our recommendation. Review what you have written after you have gotten feedback from your instructor and a final grade. Learn from that before moving on to the next assignment. And throughout the eight weeks of this course, continue to look back at what you've done and how far you have come. This is part of the journey of being a better writer. Strong writing is comprised of strong paragraphs. Effective paragraphs generally focus on one main idea encapsulated by a topic sentence. And good paragraphs are coherent. They flow and all the details fit together well, like building blocks. They are the basis from which we build our writing. Good academic writing not only presents general ideas, but also backs them up with specifics. And this is something that I see time and again working with college students is a lack of the backup. That's the hallmark of academic writing. Every claim you make must be backed up. And so it fits together like a string of dominoes. Idea, backup, idea, backup, and so it flows beautifully. Many GEC 101 students are surprised that this writing course focuses so much on critical reading. You will be asked to question and to comment thoughtfully on texts, those you write and those written by your classmates. Spend the time reading your classmates' work and thinking about what you can say to them tactfully, in a timely manner, and respectfully so that they can improve in their writing. That is what's going to make them better writer, but here's the surprise. It's going ultimately to make you a better writer as well. Students in this course also focus on developing and analyzing arguments. You will think critically about them. You will consider whether an argument includes an appeal to hearts and values, to character and or to logic. And the ancient Greeks called this pathos, ethos, and logos. And this was, of course, the brainchild of Aristotle. So this is persuasive argumentation. We will also focus our attention on identifying fallacies in arguments. There are many variations of fallacies, including a bandwagon appeal, false authority, veiled threat, hasty generalization, and oversimplification. Becoming aware of fallacies will help you be a better reader, in other words, a better consumer of texts, but also a better writer because you will not create fallacies in your writing. Academic writing is not built upon fallacies. It is built upon careful argumentation supported with trustworthy sources. The point of this focus is for students to learn how to construct arguments that are purposeful and strong. To do this, they will need to formulate a working thesis and make strong ethical, logical, and emotional appeals. Strength, as this young woman is wearing her boxing gloves, is what we're looking for in academic writing. It's robust. It is not something that can be knocked down easily. In a lot of ways, it's as though you are there in person saying, this is my argument, this is how I arrived at it, and this is how I'm supporting it. When you come from a position of strength, others will have a hard time telling you that you are wrong. A good argument is well organized. The classical Greek method of organizing an argument begins with an introduction, offers different lines of argument, considers alternative arguments, and summarizes a strong conclusion, very much like a Greek temple. Everything is logical, everything is built upon a strong foundation, and we know what to expect. However, there are other ways to organize an argument, as you can see illustrated in this very contemporary structure. 
the most important point that the argument has to be convincing. And in academic writing, a good argument uses sources correctly. That will be the exercise you tackle in the final research paper you will write for this course. This concludes the theoretical lecture for week one. End of week one, theoretical lecture.